Ethos Decorum. My name is Esteban Whiteside, and I'm a visual artist in Washington, D.C. I would say um, that my work is, and I don't know, I kind of feel like a modern uh, folk artist. Um, Cause I'm, you know, I'm self-taught um, and, and, you know, basically, you know, all of my work kind of focuses around issues that um, black and brown people face now, right now in America. Um, yeah. I got into art kind of just because I, I didn't have any money to buy people Christmas presents. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to paint some gifts and give those out this year. Maybe next year I actually have some money. Um, but then when I was creating those gifts, you know, I just realized like I really enjoyed painting. Um, so once that Christmas, Christmas was over, you know, I just continued kind of sketching and painting every day. Um, you know, I really started off doing just some like abstract stuff. And then, you know, a few years of, of just kind of trying to make stuff that looked good, I started, you know, focusing on uh, social issues. Um, you know, this piece right here, you know, I kind of got like, you know, will of misfortune because this is just something that continually happened. You know, this last week, another individual was just shot and killed, Amir uh, Locke, I believe, from a no-knock warrant, you know, and it's just like, you know, uh, you know, while we're sitting here begging for justice, we might get a little justice here and there, but I feel like, you know, I don't advocate for, for murdering police or anything, but like, you know, they gotta feel the pain that we feel and it can't be through marching and it can't be through voting. It has to be like real fear. Like when I get in my car, you know, I hope that I don't get pulled over because anything could happen. And that's the same way I want these cops to feel. Like when I go out in public and show my face, I might get fucked up because of the way that I'm treating people. So I just want like, you know, just some fear putting these officers because without it, they're gonna keep acting the way they're acting and you know, the justice system doesn't do anything, you know? Like, that's why I have kind of like paid leave week here because, you know, the cops kill somebody and, and they get put on paid leave, like that's, like that's a consequence, you know? It's nothing, so. Um, if cops feared that, you know, they were going to be killed for killing us, I think maybe they would think twice before they pulled the trigger. So I would say my process is, is first to, you know, find a subject matter, uh, find a subject that I want to tackle. And then, you know, then I start sketching just to try to, you know, figure out if there's a way that I can portray, you know, the message that I, that I want to portray. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, there's a subject matter that I really want to touch, but I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to illustrate it. So I just kind of move on and come back to it. Um, and then, you know, once I kind of get a sketch, kind of go to the iPad and draw it on there, kind of clean it up, and then from there, kind of go to Canvas. Um, you know, so this piece, I did it kind of right after uh, the 2020 election and I was kind of trolling a lot of people in my hometown um, right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. And I, I, I have a lot of people uh, from my hometown that follow me on Insta and, and Facebook and that they were just so hurt when Trump lost that they, you know, they couldn't believe it. So, you know, this was, this was really to, to troll, you know, all the people who were hurt by Trump losing and you know, also it's like the, the 2024 election is right around the corner. And, you know, like all, all this is, is about to be, you know, right back in our face again. Um, so I don't know, it's just, I just kind of feel like the passion that these, these Republicans and right wingers have for Trump is, is way more than they ever have for Jesus or whoever, you know, they think Jesus is. So that's why I wanted to make this piece because I never seen anything like it before. I, I remember, you know, I remember vividly, um, I wasn't really tuned in to a lot of the issues that were going on in the black community if it didn't necessarily happen to me or somebody I knew. And I remember when Michael Brown got killed, um, I, I was just, 
I remember hearing about how long his body was laying in the street and you know how hot it was and everything switched you know at that moment I was like you know like I could get killed tomorrow by the police for nothing you know like I don't want this to be the work that represents me as some you know decorative art I want it to I wanted to mean something and I want to start addressing you know some of these issues um, that are affecting uh, you know, black community. And, you know, it was after I saw his body laying in the street where I just kind of made a decision that I wasn't going to do any work anymore that didn't have um, a real heavy meaning and just mean, mean something more to just, to me, mean something to like, uh, you know, people that look like me. Yeah, so I got the idea for this piece after um, the documentary by Ava, Ava DuVernay. Um, about the 13th Amendment, um, you know, and it's just like, you know, they, they try to preach that, you know, slavery is over and, and, and all that, but, you know, I talked to a gentleman at, at my opening who said, you know, when I got put in jail, I didn't sign up to work for 16 cents a day, and if he refused to work, he got thrown in the hole. So, you know, slavery is still alive and well, um, they do a good job at concealing what companies use uh, private la uh, prison labor, but you know a ton of companies do, and I think like everybody should do their research and make sure that you're not you know supporting these companies who are you know keeping keeping slavery alive in the U.S. The name of the current exhibit is because of the times, and you know th these pieces were all done in the last couple of years, and you know basically they're just a snapshot of, you know, the last couple years and also just, you know, the subjects that happen that continue to happen and, you know, 10 years from now they're still going to be happening because of, you know, nothing really ever changes. So, you know, when I look back at this show, it's just, to me, it's a snapshot of, you know, 2020 to 2022, um, just kind of the, some of the subjects that meant the most to me. When people are looking at your art, whether it's in a gallery or online, what do you want them to take from it? I want them to feel that that I'm angry, and I want them to know that you know um, that at least you know that that I'm speaking up about the things that bother me, and you know I'm doing it through my art, and that I'm not okay with the way shit is right now. So. You know, that's basically is is why I'm doing it because I, I'm not okay with the state of you know this country and and how black and brown people are treated and and poor people are treated. So you know, it helps me. It's therapeutic for me to paint these subjects that bother me and bother other people. And and then also, you know, it's just it's what's going on right now.